Hi there, friends. Grab yourself a cup of tea. This is Homekeepers. We're so glad to be here. Come into your home daily. It is such a blessing. And um, we know it is because we hear from you that you are blessed by any number of things we do on here, especially the wonderful guests that the Lord sends our way. So if this is your first time to see the program, please don't let it be your last time. We like to ask the viewers to just grab a cup of tea and join us. And um, hopefully we'll get to be good friends along the way. We've got, we've got a lot of good friends out there, viewers, and we hear from you every month and want you to know we love and appreciate you. Um, it's going to be a good day. This is the third and final interview with Dr. Timothy Jennings. And I mentioned on the program yesterday, I just have appreciated so much the things he has had to say. He is a psychiatrist. And the things he had to say about the God-shaped brain, which he wrote. And uh, this is something that really needs a whole lot of time. But boy, he has covered a lot of territory on this. Today's going to talk about the fire circuits in your brain, how fear affects it, how how it has an alarm system and sends out messages. And if you hold grudges, it's going to hurt your brain. If uh, It'll undermine your health, negative things in your brain. And also... A seed of bitterness really affects it. This is some of the richest stuff you'll ever hear, so stay tuned. I'm going to join Stephanie. Listen to this cauliflower garlic bread. We've never made anything like it. Oh, it smelled so good when it was baking, and I'm anxious to taste it. I haven't had a chance to do that. And so that's ready to go. And before I join her, please remember we're viewer supported. And I appreciate so much the gifts you send in, the financial gifts, big or small. Uh, we know they come from the heart. We know that they're probably, you know, instituted by the Holy Spirit. So you can use your credit card or your debit card by calling 1-800-229-0059. And the information for your writing to us, you know, the snail mail stuff, uh, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And um, thank you so, so much. I I do not have the vocabulary to tell you how much I appreciate you, but we do. So, thanks so much. Now, we've never made anything like this. We haven't, and I, it smelled really, mm -hmm. really. We baked it upstairs today, mm -hmm. and it was wafting through mm -hmm. the hallways. It smelled delicious. I'm thinking the texture, you know the cornbread texture? Mm -hmm. I think that's what it, that's kind of what it seemed like when I was making mm -hmm. it this morning. So, that I'm, I'm, I'm excited to try it. So, yeah, so we bought... Uh, <laughs> Almond flour and the uh, cauliflower rice, rice, which is frozen. Right, which we took three cups of that, we microwaved it, mm -hmm. and then I put it in a dish towel and I wrung the living daylights mm -hmm. out of it because you don't want any of that liquid because mm -hmm. it'll ruin your bread. Mm -hmm. So just ring it, ring it, ring it until the, all the all the liquid is and out. And you whip the egg whites ahead of time. Six egg whites. So I have six eggs that I separated, six egg whites. We have six yolks. We have baking powder, baking soda, garlic, melted God. butter, cauliflower, rice, Almond, almond flour, flour. Uh, thyme, and Parmesan. Uh -huh. <gasps> this is going to be so good. So yes. I'm mixing the almond flour, and the, the amounts will be on the screen at the end. Yes. Okay, and uh, that comes later. And, of course, we offer our recipes absolutely free. Yes, melted butter. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just mm -hmm. going to be so good. Six egg yolks. Yeah. I know. I do have a, a little bit of bad news, a little disclaimer. Oh. Uh, we learned the hard way that... You take it out of the pan while it's still warm. Baking powder. So it's got Salt. a little bit stuck, but I don't well, think that'll affect the taste. It will still get eaten. So, yeah, take it out while it's warm. Mm -hmm. We just let it sit. Mm -hmm. um, this is a bunch of garlic. A lot of garlic. <gasps> so good. I think garlic's very good for you. You know, it might not win friends and influence people if you eat a lot hey, of Hey, if you want to get rid of people. <laughs> yeah. My husband's grandmother used to eat garlic and butter sandwiches. Oh, you are yeah. kidding. So How then, long did she live? Oh, she, they were very, like, in their 90s. Yeah. yeah. But all yeah. he remembers <laughs> growing up is her, like, come here and give me a kiss. And all he <laughs> remembers is the garlic. What yeah. a childhood memory. Yeah. Huh? So I got that all mixed up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add in a quarter of the fluffed egg whites. Okay. And then this gets mixed in, and then the other is going to get folded in, okay? Well, um, this is a totally healthy recipe. 
So, what like, do you think the keto, the keto friends, the, this is you. This is. Yes. So. This is a lot thicker than what I made earlier. I'm wondering, if, am I, I just want to make <laughs> sure I'm not, something wrong. I'm not missing anything. I got the butter. Uh-huh. Okay. And the eggs. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to put the cauliflower in. And I'm going to put. Now, um, you could, we, we bought the cauliflower, call it rice. Yeah. Uh, the frozen. frozen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but your food processor would do that. Certainly, yeah. yes. If you wanted fresh cauliflower, put it in the food processor. Well, processor also, would be a lot cheaper. Yes, because uh, that was yeah. you said that yeah. they were like two dollars a bag. Yeah. And th this is not a cheap no um, loaf of I guess bread. If you but healthy is not eat, cheap. Eat healthy. It's just not. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's, it's not like uh, McDonald's or. No, and it's not like your ninety-nine cent loaf of bread from the grocery store because mm -hmm. the almond flour was what five bucks, but it yeah. made two loaves. So really, I mean, um, all in all, well, for healthy. There's something about this that was so special. Yeah. And we're anxious to taste it. Yeah, it's because we've made all these ridiculously naughty things lately. So I asked um, Stephanie, I said, okay, do you put butter on this healthy recipe? And she said, no, you put Parmesan. Yes. And parsley. Yes. So. Okay, here's the rest. I'm gonna fold gently. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you spray that pan really good? Well, I could do it again. Just so we don't have another sticking disaster, right? But uh, Susan, who really worked with it, she she time. taught me. Said so you take it out while it's while it's warm. still warm. Yeah, for sure. Oh, smell that. Oh, thyme, fresh thyme. Yes, yes. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of parsley in it and then leave some of the parsley to put on top afterwards. And then you put it in your loaf pan and you bake it at 350 for uh, 50, 45 to 50 minutes. Uh huh. Look at that's lovely. Mm. Can you throw that in the microwave for like 10 seconds? Mm hmm Yeah. Mm. Oh my goodness. Because then we're gonna put, because we didn't take it out, we cooked it, we baked it earlier, but if you bake it, mm -hmm. you bring it out fresh and you slice it and you put Parmesan cheese on it. Watch and it, I parsley. made a mistake and put 10 minutes oh on that. My. So. Oh my, oh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> 10 minutes later, we're coming back with bread that is um, uh, dry, completely ruined. Okay. Yeah, so we're just putting it in the, in the microwave just to warm it up so we can put the Parmesan cheese on. I took a bite of that, I'm telling you. You did? You cheated? I did. Okay, put a little Parmesan mm -hmm. on there. Oh, yeah, and, and a little parsley. A little parsley. And I'll get a fork. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to try this texture. It has a wonderful texture. You see what I mean? <laughs> My keto friends, <laughs> yep, who are not eating bread, you. Uh -huh. you can have this, and it satisfies like bread. Wow, it does. You know what? That make a great egg sandwich. Mm. If you oh, do wow. two, two thin, two thin uh, mm -hmm. slices and put an egg in between, I have no <sighs> words. It's just wonderful. But if you want this recipe. My mother said, don't talk when you've got food in your if mouth. If you want this recipe, mm -hmm. the, all the information will come up on the screen afterwards. You can email. You can send a self-addressed stamped envelope. And then you can hear Dr. Uh, Jennings. Whoa, what a guest. You're going to love him if you haven't heard him. So stay with us. Boy, it's good. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. I have a feeling you've been enjoying uh, Dr. Timothy Jennings as much as I have, author, speaker, and you have a private practice of uh, psychiatry. Yes. I would never ask you what goes on, but I'll bet it's a very interesting life. I've seen pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you have. Now, I promised the viewers last time I heard you tell a story that really, it really touched my heart. Uh, girls getting married, it's going to be a church wedding and all, and the mother was really, we would probably say too shy, you know, to be walked down the aisle when all the guests were always here. You know, mm -hmm. she comes in before the wedding party. And how that was handled. and came out with a good 
result. You want me to share that with, with Absolutely. you? Absolutely, yeah. yeah, that was a so, good story. So the reason I share the story is to help people understand how God built our brain circuits to work. When our love circuits become active, they calm down our fear circuits. Just like the Bible tells us, love casts, casts out, out, fear. out fear. And so she came to see me because she had a long history of being that socially anxious person who would be the person who never wanted to get up in front and give a speech. Uh, if she had to go to a social, she would hang out in the back and try not to be seen. That kind of person mm -hmm. who just gets overwhelmed uh, when she is the center of attention. And the reason she came to see me is she was having panic because her daughter was uh, getting married and the closer the wedding got, the more stress she got because how our mother seated at the wedding after the church is full walk down the center and there'd be this moment everybody would be looking at her and she was just so stressed she was actually thinking about not going to her own, only daughter's wedding and so um, understanding what I've told you about how the brain works I said to her you know whose special day is this and and she said um, my daughter's and I said and, and who are you thinking about and she dropped her hand she said myself and I said, why don't you try taking the focus off of how you're going to feel and focus instead on your love for your daughter, what it will mean to her for you to be there and share this special day for, with her and the joy it will bring her heart. And, uh, and she came back to me after the wedding and she was so giddy to see me when, when in the <laughs> waiting room, just hardly wait. And she came into my office and told me, Dr. Jennings, I went to the wedding and I walked down that aisle. I didn't have any fear at all. The whole time I just kept thinking of my love for my daughter and what, I, what a joy it was going to be to, to be there for her. And I didn't care what those people thought. And that's exactly what happened. When you fire your love circuits, it casts out the fear. Fear. Yeah, that was almost a, a Solomon answer. Uh, it's not like cutting a baby in half, but uh, that was a, a great answer and got a great result. Yeah, it did. It did. Mm -hmm. So I um, want to talk a little bit about how the, how, the, how the brain works because, boy, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And, and the more science gets into it, it's just, it just is... God, 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 the creator, the creator. That's what it's saying. So uh, does the brain have an alarm system? Yes, it does. And I think we've all experienced that <laughs> if uh, we've been suddenly startled or something. And that alarm system, when it fires, will, will kick on the, uh, you know, your adrenaline and it's that fight or flight type of experience and your heart rate and blood pressure picks up and so forth. Yes, we, we definitely have an alarm circuit. Mm -hmm. And does the brain affect our immune system? Oh, yes. And so what happens is when the alarm system fires, it alerts your immune system and, and, and tells your immune system to prepare for invasion because the immune system to our uh, is to our body what the National Guard is to our nation, is to protect us from invasion. So if you are startled on a trail with a bear or a lion or something out there, uh, your immune system will, uh, your alarm will fire and immediately say, hey, prepare for invasion because if you do have to wrestle the animal and you survive, they're going to be little bacterial invaders coming. But what happens when people are chronically stressed, chronically mm -hmm. worried, chronically afraid, mm -hmm. they're chronically kicking up their immune system, which causes increased inflammation in their body, which damages insulin receptors, mm -hmm. leading to insulin resistance in the face of increased stress hormones telling the body to pump glucose in your bloodstream because you're in fight or flight mode so you need energy so you're constantly pumping glucose in but now you're beginning insulin resistance so chronic stress leads to increased risk of obesity adult onset diabetes high cholesterol heart attacks strokes and so forth that's from constantly firing those this fear is circuits. all from the brain yes yes wow um how how i think you've just maybe explained a lot of it how about just your overall health because the Bible says, as a man thinketh, yes. sorry, so is he. Yes. Yes, and so, so as a man thinks in his heart, it determines the choices you think will determine which neural circuits fire. And the more you fire them, then the law of exertion, they'll get stronger. So you'll change the brain structure and you ultimately change your character. So you become a different person by the, your thinking patterns. But you also physiologically impact your health based on your thinking patterns. You think um, grudge holding, resentful, bitter, angry, uh, fearful, all this stuff fires the stress hormones and ki kicks up those inflammatory cascades, leading to that insulin resistance, undermining our health. So, yeah, And I, I hope that the viewers caught that, that you, if you're constantly angry, if you're constantly fearful, if you're constantly got an attitude. Or resentful, you've been actually done wrong. Mm -hmm. you, somebody's actually wronged you and you won't forgive. You remain bitter throughout your life. Let's and talk I, about forgiveness. Yeah. And I had you, an awful time forgiving one time. I mean, it was major. Right. But if you don't, what happens, it causes the same stress circuitries mm -hmm. to fire and you get the same health related problems from that. And so what I help people to understand is, you know, we never forgive people for doing the right thing. 
people don't. Never happened. When you forgive, by definition, a wrong was done. So forgiving someone doesn't make it right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and one of the insidiousnesses of sin is when somebody does you wrong, not only was their action wrong, but their wrong that they do to you plants a seed of bitterness, hurt, resentment, anger in your heart. That if you don't get it out of your heart, it will take root and you will become bitter, angry, and self-focused on how it, you were done wrong and it wasn't fair that this was done and you become more self-referenced and you become like the person who wronged you. The only way to protect yourself from being infected with somebody's sinful behavior and you becoming like them is to root those seeds out of your heart and the way you do that is through forgiveness. Mm -hmm. By forgiving them, you free yourself from the bitterness and resentment. It doesn't mean what they did was wrong, it's still just as wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay? But you're now freed from the bitterness and resentment. And this is where you see Christ on the cross. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They're still just as wrong. They're still his enemies. But he doesn't let their evil infect his heart. It doesn't make them right. It makes you free. It also doesn't make them, and this is a big theological one. Uh -huh. This is God on the cross. And he forgave them. And they're yeah. still lost, forgiven. Mm -hmm. Wow. A lot of people don't get that. They think the whole issue of salvation is getting forgiveness. Oh, no. no, it's getting a new heart and right spirit. It's being reborn. It's having the circumcision of the heart by the spirit. It's having the law written on the heart and mind. It's being recreated to have the mind of Christ. It's much more than just having the sovereign forgive you. Yes, and, and I just think, I think about my viewers all the time. In my heart, I know there's a lot of them out there that have carried resentment and bitterness and unforgiveness for decades. It's time to let it go. That's right. It's time to let it go. But, but, but it's important to deal with maybe at least one myth. Many people um, are afraid to forgive because they think if they forgive, then they got to trust the person. They can't hold it against right. them anymore. <laughs> and that's a myth. Forgiveness does not equal restore trust. Okay? Mm -hmm. Trust comes from a person being trustworthy. So if you forgive somebody for doing you wrong, you don't trust them unless mm -hmm. there is substantial evidence that they have made change called repentance mm -hmm. and they are now trustworthy. It might they, take a while too. Right. <laughs> and it might never happen. Right. Okay. So no, you, just because you've, you forgive them, but you still may not trust them mm -hmm. because they're not trustworthy. So no. when people realize that, they go, oh, I've been holding back because I didn't want to have to trust them. Yeah. And it, uh, it doesn't make them right. Nope. It doesn't makes make you, them right. It makes you free. Okay. Um, now this book, it begins with a diagram of the brain. It's, it's very educational, but also someone like myself uh, can understand it. It's, it's, it's not real, uh, real technical. What was it that, um, th th this is really an accomplishment. I, I, I read so many books. Uh, what was it that uh, just really influenced you to write The God-Shaped Brain? And also you've done it where a layman could understand it. You don't have to have a medical degree to understand this book. You know, somebody, one of, a teacher that I, that I respected growing up, um, you know, pointed to Christ as the greatest teacher of all, mm -hmm. and that the greatest teachers are the ones who can explain complex things so even the children can understand. And so I, I, I thought that was a great idea growing mm -hmm. up, and so all along I've always asked the Lord, you know, help me to be able to explain complex things for people to understand, and I think the Lord has helped me do that. Mm -hmm. And that's, that is ultimately the goal, to make complex things simple. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, now, a little bit about the, the aging brain, and you, you say this is really kind of personal. Yeah, yeah. My, my wife's mother um, has Alzheimer's dementia, mm -hmm. and, um, and my wife, uh, you know, went over to see her recently, and when my wife um, was uh, leaving and saying goodbye, her mother said to her, um, is your mother still alive? Mm -hmm. and, um, and, of course, my wife said yes, and she goes, that's nice, and... And so this, this type of dementia, it's it so, so horrible. And, and because my m wife's mother has it, mm -hmm. that means my wife has a higher risk for it. Mm -hmm. And so I spent some serious time researching the evidence to really identify the variables mm -hmm. that, that contribute to causing late onset Alzheimer's dementia. Mm -hmm. and, and if you understand those variables and you change your lifestyle, mm -hmm. even if you have a higher risk for it, you can avoid getting it. And that's what the data shows. Even people with mild cognitive changes, if they start doing the things in this book, they won't progress to Alzheimer's and that's dementia. And this book's called uh, The Aging Brain. Now, 
staying active is helpful, isn't it? Yes. I exercise every night. Are you proud of me? I am. Mm -hmm. uh, physical exercise um, causes the brain to turn on neurotropins that cause that to uh, be able to sprout new connections. It keeps uh, the dendrites and axons healthy, so you don't so you uh, um, maintain what you have. And a study of people over 65 that began walking regularly after a couple of months, they could see 2% growth in the hippocampus. That's where new memories take place, which made their brain look two years younger mm -hmm. just from walking. So it's very helpful physical exercise. Mental exercise is helpful too. Okay, now how do you do that? Mental exercise, Read. the data shows that the, the benefit, the best benefit, that, and it's epigenetic, you're turning on proteins, and those proteins make your neurons healthy and, and reduce your risk of Alzheimer's dementia is new learning, new learning. Crossword puzzles, not new learning. That's rote. You've, you've doing it over and over again. Oh, I do yeah. that. So what yeah. else shall I do? But new learning, uh, studying this book and then okay. learning something you didn't know before and retaining yes. it, that's new learning. Okay, Learning something you don't already know keeps those uh, genes turned on. That's uh, a blessing what I do because I, I read an awful lot of books and it, it is an absolute blessing for sure. And, and you know there's two different types of reading. There's reading just to be entertained. Mm -hmm. And there's reading to learn, where you stop, pause, contemplate. How does that apply? Oh, and the, and you make the connections in, in how you understand things. That kind of reading is really beneficial, rather than just the reading to, you know, read. Yes, I, I've often said I read a book that I don't have to think about. <laughs> and those, <laughs> It's just entertaining. And I do those, too. I enjoy those. But those aren't really going to help uh, the, the reduce mm -hmm. the risk of dementia. The real help is when you do, do some of that reading that requires you to really think about something and contemplate and then oh and the light goes on oh i didn't know that and you've learned something new so turn off your tv and read a book that yes one of the things that accelerates the decline okay is retirement yes. when we read if you don't use it you lose it and you it's not in the bible retirement you can't find the word no so when you retire and then and and it's okay to retire from a job as long right. as you engage somewhere else okay mm -hmm. but if we're talking retire go home put your feet up get your potato chips out and watch TV, you're just sliding board right into the either dementia or the grave. I mean, you've got to stay active to stay vibrant. Let's, we've got a couple minutes left. Let's talk about this, this obsession with technology. It's destroying our interaction, for one thing. Um, you see parents sitting around, you know, playing with their phones and their kids sitting there doing nothing, they're being ignored. But also, it, it's just taken over America. Yeah, social media actually, uh, the, the data is pretty strong on this, undermines social ability and social interaction. Oh my goodness. So the, you know, if you're interacting online, <laughs> you're not actually interacting in real life no. to a great degree for, mm -hmm. for a vast majority. Mm -hmm. See, you have so much energy to expend you can expend it in the real world, achieving real things like mm -hmm. writing real books, going to a real job, mowing a real lawn, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Or you can do it in a virtual world with some of these online fantasy characters that people build up all these abilities and so forth, but they're not achieving anything in the real world. Or they can build a real relationship with a real person, or they can build uh, you know, all their likes and all the people who follow them, a social following, but those aren't real relationships. I. I think that parents ought to really take control of this. Yes, I time. agree. Remember, you, the inmates don't run the asylum. You, you're the parent. I've read where Steve Jobs and um, Ga Bill Gates, their kids had very limited, very limited use on this social media. And, if and if you internet. want the brain to develop in a healthy way, you have to limit that type of stuff. But the problem is in many, uh, many, I've had many parents afraid to take social media, uh, tablets or iPhones or whatever from their kids because they're afraid that the, they'll get in trouble with the schools or trouble with, with social work services or whatever, that it'll be abusive to their children. And I have to educate them. Come on. The, the, having a social media account or a smart, ta a smart device is not a human right. <laughs> it is a privilege of the mature. Mm -hmm. And if you want to allow them to have access, then my recommendation is that you make them catalog, and school time doesn't count, and church time doesn't count. It's free time. Their free time is cataloged. And for every two hours, they do something real. And it could be anything. They're playing, they're playing basketball in the backyard. They're playing tennis. Uh, they, they're at playing Monopoly with the family on a, on a board, okay? Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter. Anything that's real, for every two hours they do something real in the real world, they earn one hour of screen time. 
two to one. I think that's 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 fair enough, because as you navigate this world right now, you probably need a little bit more ability than I have uh, with all the new technical things. I can't tell you how good it's been to have you here. Well, I, I just appreciate you having me so much. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, you've really uh, kind of put the pieces together on some of these things, and I think we haven't seen anything yet. Um, your book talks a little bit about uh, hyperbaric oxygen. I had a, a young man from uh, been in Afghanistan with a head injury, and that was something that helped his brain. Uh, we're, we're kind of, it's exciting. We're kind of just on the precipice of just a lot of things that can happen. But if you take that, that spiritual side off of it, yes. it can lead you down the wrong path. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks for being here. All right, thank you so much. And uh, you're always welcome. Thank you. Coming through. Got another book, why we're glad to have you. Hey, stay with me. I have a couple of things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Hope you've enjoyed those interviews as much as I have. And let me again tell you about this God-shaped brain. And we did have the website up through most of the interview. I would certainly think that any pastor would want this in his library. Boy, this could be a great help when you're preparing sermons. And it's interesting, the Bible says that in the last days, knowledge would increase. And as I've mentioned before on this program, I think that's every kind of knowledge, good, bad, and different, whatever. It, it's, it's, it's like it's just on a, on a speed track almost. And uh, this kind of a, a book is certainly in that uh, vein of thought because um, learning more and more about the whole body and to have a whole book on the brain, I think is just a wonderful blessing. But you know, everything that they learn, whether it's in space, medicine, science, whatever it is, it points back to the truth of the word of God. It points back to the truth of a creator who actually made this universe in such a way that I had a friend call me from Albania yesterday on a cell phone. That's what's happening. So try to stay up with it, my friends, because God created all of it. And I'm sorry we're out of time, but please join me next time because I believe that homekeeping is the most important thing you can ever do. God bless you. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.